The basic reason for a system like this is to eliminate conventional methods of distillation of solvents in a laboratory atmosphere, which, number one, is highly toxic. It emits lots of bad vapors to the top of the building, which nobody sees, but they exist and present a very high fire danger in terms of solvents like THF, ether, and most of the other flammables, THF, ether ranked the highest. Uh, the safety advantages of this is, this, of a system like this is, it does not emit any vapors, and it operates in a very low pressure. Most of the time, between 10 and 12 PSI, you can go as low 6 psi. It is a push-pull system. Uh, there's a vacuum pump around the corner and an argon supply to the front plates and to the solvents which will be in the cabinet here. You have a separate system for inert gas, which is here and here. This manifold operating this half, this manifold operating that half. Uh, in standard operation of the system, the operators will never touch any of this here, except for the necessity of cleaning the filter. The purpose of this filter is to eliminate any sub two micron particles that may come off the drying bed. When, when removing it and reinstalling it, make sure the arrow points down towards the flow of the solvent. By the time it's normally noticed that the cake is completely empty, you have also emptied the columns, which means you're starting to pump on the columns. The dip, when, when the solvent in the keg reaches below the dip tube, you're opening the loop between the argon and, and eliminating solvents. Then you're agitating the drying bed, which liberates lots of fine particulates. So when restarting the system, it'll take five to 10 minutes to refill the column. And that's mostly the time when you have to clean this filter because two microns is, starts to clog the filter. However, if the flow is sufficient, do not clean the filter until it becomes a problem. And do not operate a cell phone while taking off solvents because you think you have the time because nobody cleaned the filter and the flow is real slow. You walk away, have a sandwich, go to lunch, and you empty everything through the pump on the floor or against the wall. Now you want to come in reinstalling the filter. I'm reinstalling the filter using a first hand tightening it, assuring that the arrow points down, which is the direction of the flow of the solvent. You need an open-ended wrench 9 16th low profile. This is a homemade custom wrench because spaces are tight on some of these. So, and then, and then assuring that everything is tight, I'm gonna have to block this while I do this. It's, it's the only, basically the only mechanical procedure you have to perform. Okay. Kegs are, are in the, in the flameproof cabinet. The solvent hoses come up through the wall of the cabinet, connecting to the bottom of the back column. The back column is connected via a tube to the front column. It, so it comes in the back, comes out the top, comes over to the front bottom and comes over, over 
on the front comb out towards the plate towards the takeoff location which is here this this represents a standard model takeoff flask solvent some groups prefer to take it through adapters into a flask directly however this is the only sure way of extracting solvent and hydrous and anaerobic so you have a ball and socket clamp a solvent proof o-ring we the ball and socket joint is used so the operators do not get a 2440 standard joint stuck on there and it breaks in the hand trying to get it off this will this will come off as a matter of fact if the pressure on the system is set too high this starts to the, the clamp has enough give it starts to leak and float which which is which is a design safety issue you just run out of argon before you want to uh, this system has no solvent in it at this point but I explain the operation this valve separates this volume from either solvent, vacuum, or argon. Wherever this points, this is what you get up to this valve. If you switch this over to argon, which is not connected right now, and this is your, this represents your Schlenk valve on a double oblique manifold, this argon vacuum, same principle. Now, if I turn this to vacuum, that will turn the pump on. When evacuating the flask, this has to be to vacuum. Then you open this valve, which in turn again will turn on the pump. You are now evacuating this flask. And you schlank back and forth as many times as you like. It, depending on how much solvent you would like in here, you have to remember that the pump will probably, at the optimum, reach three, three to four torr. It's a diaphragm pump. Because of fire danger, you can pump solvent through it. It's just doesn't catch fire like a mechanical pump would. So do not ever use a mechanical pump because this one doesn't work unless it's explosion proof. And that's also one reason why a system like this is used with a mechanical, with a diaphragm pump which is designed to move solvent. Now, imagine if you have about 100 ml or 50 ml of solvent here from the previous day and you want to add more. You cannot pump on it because you are then pumping the solvent off through the pump which contaminates the vacuum manifold. However, you can switch this you can switch this to argon, open the scepter and you have a positive leak. Then you can add more solvents, since it's a positive leak, to your desire just by argon pressure in the keg. And then you close this again, you close your scepter here, and you're ready to go without having to let anything up to oxygen and humidity. And these scepter are suitable for multiple hole punches. Uh, however, it is prudent to replace them on, uh, in at regular intervals depending on the amount of holes in there. If you do want to discard solvents, you simply put the bulb on the argon pressure and open the drain valve. When you are finished evacu evacuating the bulb and ready to take off solvent, you always close this valve. 
you always switch this over to argon. This is your, what we call, being delicate, the first year switch plate, so people do not reach behind there and try and open the solvent valve with this valve pointing to vacuum. You will immediately fill this bulb up and therefore fill the whole line with solvent. When you take off solvent, this always is closed. Now you can open this valve and take off the solvent, close this valve, leave this pointing to argon, and store the remaining solvent under argon. And when I say argon, I mean it has to be ultra pure argon, ultra pure inert gas, depending on but never regular. The difference between regular inert gas and UHP gas can be as much as 40 ppm, so f you name it, water, rust, junk, oxygen, whatever. It's industrial, never use industrial grade because what you degas with limits the, determines the water and oxygen content in your final the final product. And the idea is to get a hydrous anaerobic solvent. You don't want to start with bad gas. And, and the solvents such as ether, ether is always stabilized with BHT. THF is never stabilized because, it's, because it, it polymerizes, which turns the drying bed on THF to a snotty, clumpy thing. You ruin the columns almost instantly. The THF ether and some of the others will develop peroxides, but only in the light of oxygen and light. Since there's neither on the proper operation Stressing again, if you do have bad gas, you will generate peroxides. But peroxides do not really become an issue until somewhere around 100 ppms. But they're stored in the columns. So on the bottom of the column, there's a label that gives you a number for a peroxide kit. And every other BWR, every other refill you should check what comes out of the column and what's, what you're putting into the tanks. Ether should only be used out of a sealed can, an aluminum can, and not drums. Ether drums are cheaper but they leak. You can always smell them. Uh, one gallon Aluminum cans is the only way to go because you get what you pay for it. If you want to deactivate a system or a system isn't being used and you know either, the, either of those circumstances, you will simply close off the kegs and you close off the in. You, they close off all the valves on both columns. The solvents in a column will last virtually indefinitely. Nothing going in, nothing coming out. The kegs can deteriorate depending on whether the argon atmosphere is maintained. There again, there's no light, no oxygen. It's We've had systems shut down for six months and they survived fine. One additional note in terms of solvents. If you use DCM, it, it has to be stabilized with either amylin or cyclohexene. Unstabilized DCM will generate with poor maintenance will generate 
HCL and small amounts of phosgene, which turns everything green, brown, and terrible shape. Everything starts to rust. Do not use unstabilized DCM until you have a really good reason. If your chemistry can live with amylin or cyclohexene is a, is a preferred stabilizer. Amylin gets stored in the system, in the towers, eventually will come over in the end product, but you don't know when. Your chemistry turns bad and you immediately think it's water in the DCM, but it's not the case, it's, it's the amylin. So. DMF as a solvent on the system Present, represents a special issue which means it has a very high vapor pressure so you have to be extremely careful not to pump any DMF into the vacuum system because it will confuse the regulator on the pump the little brain it'll it'll act like you have a leak a vacuum leak but it's simply it's it simply represents DMF vapors in the system that the pump is unable to pump away rapidly. So you need to be aware of it. Also, softens all the rubber hose to the pump, etc., because it dissolves almost anything, including your shoes. <laughs> Make, make sure the gasket is centered on the provided o-ring grooves in the cap and the keg. It's a, you cannot, you can in fact put it together offside, but you center it. You make sure, you make sure you cannot move it. This little gizmo here with a blue cap is the overpressure valve in case your regulator mis malfunctions. It doesn't uh, blow up the keg, it vents the keg. You grab four jaws, there's a vice grip, adjust for vice grip, squeeze it together, then you can tighten the nut and you undo it and you're ready to go. The reverse of this is when the keg's empty, you have to remember there's the pressure from the system still in the keg. If you just undo the clamp, you have to remember you have 10 psi of pressure in the keg and this thing can jump up. Always vent the keg through the argon valve before undoing the clamp.